Okay, hi there guys, I am Ville and this is Animal Crossing New Horizons and today I'm gonna show you how to get some of these purple hyacinths. The purple hyacinth is the hardest hybrid flower to get in the hyacinth family, but no problems, I got you covered as usual. If you follow this method of mine, which I call the clone pair method, you're gonna have a 25% chance to get these purple hyacinths. So an excellent freaking chance. And you can see the overview to this method in this screen. I'm gonna explain everything you need to know in the video, don't worry. But if we look at the simplification of this method over here, it's gonna lead to some rare island super oranges and some rare island super blues and these are called clone pairs because both of the flowers will be identical that's the whole point of the method and if you look at this orange pair 25 percent chance to make purple and with the blues 25 percent chance to make purple so this method when you get to the end will give you absolutely great chances of getting these purple hyacinth. It's, it is actually the best chance you can get out of these normal flowers to get these uh, purple hyacinths. And what does that 25% chance actually mean? It means that when you have these pairs over here and you water them and when they eventually produce a flower, every single time they produce a flower they will have a 25% chance, a 1 in 4 chance to produce purple for the rest of eternity. So once you get one of these pairs going on, you are set. They will always have that 25% chance to produce purple every single time they make any new flower. So that's why this this method will get you set up very nicely for the future. Even though when you get a purple, then you can start multiplying the purple. So that's going to be even better. And this is not any sort of haphazard method where you just combine stuff together and you hope for the best. Nope. This is a very methodical way. We're basically working with the genetics in the game. As you can see, there's different numbers here. That means that flowers have different genetics. So we are working with the game's code with these genetics to make sure that you can maximize the chance. You can game the system to a point and that is going to give us the best possible chance which is, which is 25. So I've seen methods on the internet where people just combine stuff and if you have bad luck then you might have to wait for a long time with those methods. Like look at these oranges over here. They have a 6% chance to make purple. That is not a very good chance. It means that you have to produce 100 flowers to get 6 purples. 100 freaking flowers. If you have bad luck, then you might be waiting for freaking ages. So would you rather have a 6% chance or would you rather have a 25% chance? Exactly. So that's why I'm making this video. So you guys can also get your hands on these purple hyacinths in a much easier, faster way. Okay. And in this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know. We're going to go step by step. We're going to go face by face. I'm going to show you the formations, how to put these flowers, what to do after that, what to discard, what are the chances, etc. There's going to be bonus tips. There's going to be a summary section if you want to go straight to there. And I'm going to put timestamps in the description box of the video so you can jump to different sections or phases if you want. And all the information that I'm going to uh, tell you in the video, I'm also going to put it into the description box as well. It's going to be written there. So you can go there and read about how to get these purple hyacinths with the clone pair method if you wish to. So in a nutshell, this video is going to be absolutely packed with information on how to get these gosh darn purple hyacinths. But there you go. That is the intro. If you are ready to get your own 25% chance on getting these purple hyacinths, then let's get to it. Phase 1. We're going to start off by laying down some reds 
these are just normal reds from the store you can see the seat pack icon here that means that you can buy these from the store or you can buy these from the gardener sloth and then we're gonna put down normal yellows so red and yellow together pairs like this and one space around and I'm gonna do two rows here so you can see how to position these flowers if you want to do a bigger operation it's totally up to you how many you want to do you could do one two three four or you can do seven billion if you want but the main point is red and yellow space red and yellow space red and yellow space red and yellow space and yes it doesn't have to be like okay like a total space around you can put them on an edge like this if you want you could put these in a corner just so that the flowers are only touching one other flower that is the main point here so yes you can put them in a corner or next to an edge that is fine just make sure that there's only two flowers that are touching each other red and yellow so don't do any sort of like freaking cross patterns or whatever that is that is not gonna work very well so red and yellow space red and yellow space and then when you start the next row you're gonna put an empty space over here red and yellow space red and yellow space red and yellow space red and yellow space that is how the phase one works and what are we gonna get out of these so you're gonna water all of these guys they're in their separate pairs and they have a 50% chance to make some oranges okay and this is what we want so 50% chance to produce orange you're gonna take every orange you get out of these guys and we're gonna move them to the next section and you can also get yellows and these yellows we're gonna discard they are very interesting yellows though as you can see if you have two of these yellows 111 they can basically produce probably every single freaking flower type of the hyacinth that you can possibly imagine so these yellows are like the random flower if you have a batch of these guys they will pro produce whatever they freaking want but they are not very optimal for getting these purple so we're just gonna discard them put them separately and have fun with them if you want but yeah this is phase one red and yellow make some oranges and there you go that is the end of phase one phase two so we have our reds and yellows they have a 50 percent chance to produce orange and when they do we are gonna move these oranges to the next section you put it by itself you water it and it's gonna clone itself or you get another one from here in either case you're gonna start to build little boxes of orange and you will be watering these as you are watering these guys over here so any oranges you have here you're gonna move into these boxes and these boxes you're gonna be watering and these guys can produce orange they can produce two different kinds of orange so what we're gonna do in this phase two they can produce this normal orange and they can produce the super the island rare island orange what I would do I would mass all the oranges like this even the super island ones everything you get out of these guys everything you get out of these guys you will just put them over here in their little boxes and make boxes of four out of them okay these guys are a little off here let's move them a little bit so you're gonna make boxes of four and it is up to you how many you want to make but the point is to mass all the oranges coming from this section and this section and make boxes of four and every orange these guys produce you're just gonna add to these boxes over here and let's say we're done with section two now okay that we're, we're happy with these four fours and why are we doing these clusters of four it is because we are guaranteeing that all of these flowers will have a pair you can do it like this pair space pair space if you want but this one actually saves you some space if you put them in a cluster like this you cannot do the cluster with these flowers over here because if you do a cluster then the reds can 
interact with each other and the yellows can interact with each other and we don't want that that is not going to give us what we want but because these flowers are all oranges you can put them in a cluster like this so if these guys produce this and this then these guys can still produce on the same turn so these these flowers in the clusters of four they will always find a pair with this sort of setup so they will never clone themselves. That is the beauty of this four cluster method. So you just put these clusters one, two, three, four space, one, two, three, four space, one, two, three, four space, one, two, three, four space. Four together and one space all around. And yes, you can continue these clusters like this if you want. This is gonna be absolute overkill. You don't need to have this many of these guys. So it is up to you how many you want to have these guys over here, but one space around. But whatever, when you are happy with how many clusters of four you have, then you're going to call it a day. Okay, now we're going to stop this phase and we're going to move on to the next one. So this is the end of phase two, however many production units you, you want to have. It can be big, it can be small. End of phase two. Phase three, the final phase. So, we have the orange production units going on here. So, what we're going to do now is the actual cloning. So, when you have an orange and orange together, they can produce purple with a 6% chance, but that is not a very good chance. So, if you get a purple, yay, you're lucky. If you get a red, discard. If you get a white, discard. Yellow, discard. So, what we are looking at is the oranges and then the blues and this is basically the spread that you're gonna get out of these flowers there's a 25 percent chance to get these normal oranges 110 there's a 12 and a half percent chance to get the rare island orange and a 12 and a half percent chance to get the rare island blue hyacinth so i'm gonna call these ones super orange and super blue so 12 and a half, 12 and a half, and a 25% chance to get this. So this is going to be the spread, basically. If you get oranges and blues, then you would get two normals, one super, one super. Okay. And what are you going to do? Every orange and every blue you get out of this section, you're going to now move onto their own little cloning boxes. So... You're going to put these flowers individually like this and then you're going to start to put down tiling on the floor. You can put down actual tiling like stone or terracotta or brick or whatever you want to put down. You can put down graphics on the ground. You can put down furniture, whatever you want to put down. Just cover up the floor so these flowers will only have three boxes, like three tiles where they can grow, okay? And then you should mark the end point over here. This point, there's going to be a pair here, pair here, pair here, pair here. So this is going to be the production square. You should mark this with dark soil or just brown soil. So you know what is the production square in these boxes. So three tiles, three little pockets here. And you're putting every orange and every blue you get out of, out of this section into these pockets over here. And you would obviously continue this, make more, because you're going to, well, you're going to need to have some flowers and it's going to take some time for these to grow. So just keep adding more, build more pockets, etc. So when you have these flowers isolated, you're going to water them every day. And then, because they have no access to any other flower, and that is the point of these pockets, they will clone themselves. A flower, when it breeds and it, it cannot touch any other flower of the same species, it will clone itself. That is its only option. And that is the whole point of this uh, clone pair method. And as you can see, now we have flowers that are identical to each other. 210210120120110110 etc so these are now clone pairs 
We started with a single flower and then they cloned themselves. And look at what happens. We have a super orange, super orange. And what can they produce? Purple with a 25% chance. There we go. Winner. Look at these blues. 25% chance of making purple hyacinths. There we go again. Absolute winner. And then we have these normies and they will have a 6% chance to produce purple. Okay? So the same chances as these guys. So these are the production box variety. So what we're doing with this clone pair method, we are actually amplifying the good genetics in these flowers. Like if you get a super orange here, rare island super orange, and then you copy it, you get another super orange and together they can create purple with 25% chance. Same thing with the blue, you copy the super blue, you have two super blues and the end result is 25% chance to create purple hyacinths. So that is the whole point of this method that you can stack these good genetics with each other and that will give you the best possible chance to get these freaking purple hyacinths. And this is why you isolate the flowers and not mix them up. Look what happens when you mix these flowers up. So you have the super orange and you have the normal orange. And okay, they can create purple 12.5% chance. That is actually pretty decent. But it's not 25% chance. So if you are mixing these flowers together, you are actually diluting your chances of getting the purple. Absolutely. So, would you rather have a 12% chance or a 25% chance? Exactly. So that's why we isolate this, we copy the flowers, and the good genetics will get doubled and amplified. Although I have to say that these hyacinths, they are a little more merciful than some of the other flowers. Like you can see, there's no dead orange variety here at all. You will have 6% chance, or you will have 12% chance, or you will have 25% chance out of these oranges. So there's still pretty good chances. And the blues. If you get a blue out of these oranges, they will always be the freaking super blue. Look at this. Always. There's no normal blue variety coming out of this box here. So that is another thing why these hyacinths are actually a little easier than some of the other flowers which can totally be a pain in the ass but if you get a blue out of these boxes it should always be a super blue and then when these guys make a blue same thing super blue these guys make a blue super blue so when you're getting blues you know it's gonna be a good kind but that only applies to blues coming out of these boxes here the orange and orange Combined. There is a normal blue and that is a separate one. I think that is when you When you combine a white with white you can get a 002 blue and these guys cannot They cannot make anything else than this normal blue. So do not Mix these guys with the super blues. We're only talking this box over here orange plus orange, okay and if these guys, when you're watering them and they keep making more orange or blue, you can always put those separately as well, right? You can put them into the other boxes over here and then keep watering them and make clone pairs out of them. So everything you get out of these boxes too, it's also valid blues and oranges to put in their own little sections. It depends how much stuff you're getting out of here, how big of an operation you have going on here, etc. But you can absolutely take all the oranges and blues coming out of these clone pairs and put them to make new clone pairs as well. So that is basically how this method works. And what do you do when you finally do get a purple hyacinth? It comes up here. Hell yeah. We are the victors. We got it. You put it by itself. You water it and it's gonna clone itself. Bam. And as you can see, together these guys, they can only make purple. So you can keep them together, you can put them apart, keep watering, they will clone each other some more. Keep them together, put them into a box of four if you want. Or you can put them separately, 
doesn't matter they will create more and there you go once you get one purple then you're gonna be set for life and same thing when you have these super pairs they will always have a 25 percent chance to create purple so once you get this operation going on you are gonna be very well set to get more purple hyacinths and these guys can just when you water them by themselves or together with another one they will always produce more purple so very nice situation to be at so that is basically the end of phase three so to summarize this clone pair method phase one you will start with red and yellow just normal flowers you can buy from the store in a seed pack you can see the seed pack icon here so red and yellow space red and yellow space red and yellow space etc only two flowers touching each other no corners no side by side but only two flowers together and then space around it and you water these guys have as many as you want and they will have a 50% chance to produce orange. So every orange you're going to get out of these guys, you're going to move on to the next phase. And if you get a yellow, you can discard that or make a little fun box out of them if you want. Phase 2. So we got some oranges out of this phase over here. And we're going to start putting them into their own boxes of 4. So you're going to put one down here. Water it is going to clone itself. Or you're gonna get more out of here and you're just gonna lay them into one two three four space one two three four space one two three four space boxes and you will water these guys as well and if they make orange you will add to them these boxes as well so you grow this orange section from flowers from here and from flowers from this section as well until you're satisfied at how many you have you could have one box two boxes three four here we have eight which is probably too much but you can decide for yourself how many oranges you want to have in these boxes until you are finished with phase two okay and then we move on to phase three so once you have your production going on here you're gonna take every orange and every blue that is coming out of these guys and you're gonna put them one by one into these little pockets that you're gonna build for them you're gonna build pockets of three tiles like this and you're gonna surround them with tiling on the floor you can have graphical patterns or you can have tiling like stone on the ground anything that prevents the flowers from growing on the ground you could have fencing too if you want or furniture so three pockets and and you would mark these end points here with dark soil because this is going to be the production box so you put every orange and blue coming out of these guys into their own little boxes and you water these flowers they will eventually clone themselves since they have no access to other flowers they can only make a copy of themselves and this is going to be the end result. Like the basic um, distribution here is going to be 25% chance to make these normie oranges, 12.5% chance to make a super orange, 12.5% chance to make a super blue. So you have a 25% chance here to get one of these super flowers, basically. So... When they clone each other then you will water these guys over here and they will eventually produce something and as as we can see these super pairs both have a 25 percent chance to create purple and a 25 percent chance to create purple and there you go that's how that method works you isolate the flowers every orange and every blue coming out of here and then water they will copy themselves and then you water the clone pairs and 12 and a half percent chance to get the good orange 12 and a half percent chance to get the good blue and the blue if you get a blue out of these it will always be the super blue the orange can be super or normal but the blue will always be the good one so you know that automatically that it's going to be a good one and if these guys produce more blue or orange 
you can put them into the next uh, little pockets and keep watering these guys just you can make new clone pairs out of stuff these guys produce because these oranges can be good and the blues will always be good as well so just keep creating more clone pockets until you get what you want and when you finally get a purple you put it by itself you water it it's gonna clone itself you put them one space apart or you keep them together whatever you want to do and they will clone more and that's how you're just gonna get more and more of these purple hyacinths until your whole freaking town is run over by the color purple and there you go that is the summary of this method and then we have a few bonus tips first of all if you wanna really ramp up production you are very impatient then you can always do time travel and how that works is you build your sections you water these flowers all of these different sections that you have going on and then you save and exit game uh, you shut the game down you go to the switch menu and then you move the date one day forward then you open the game you come over here you check what flowers you have you discard the yellows here for example you take all the oranges you put them in the next section put everything in the next section etc you water everything again that you have and then you save and exit the game you shut the game down you go to the switch menu and you push the date one day forward again so that's how it basically works you just water everything move everything save and exit game shut down game and keep pushing the date one day forward one day forward one day forward one day forward that way you can do multiple days of animal crossing in one real time day this is how i got my blue roses for example i just went on a giant maniac run of time traveling to speed things up i had my little boxes you know set up but i just needed multiple days to get those flowers growing so you can absolutely speed things up with this method if you want and the flowers will not wilt in this game so that makes time travel absolutely viable and you can always come back to the day which is the real life day so you can jump backwards and forwards however you want and you can always come back to this day safely as well so this is an option if you really want to speed things up time travel and then the second bonus tip that has to do with watering and especially visitor watering so the game keeps track of how many times you have watered the flowers and depending how many you have then it's gonna give you a certain chance to produce flowers so day one to three when you water the flowers you're gonna have a five percent chance and then after that it's gonna increase by five percent every day so basically when you have these flowers over here you water them day one they're gonna have a five percent chance to produce both flowers in each pair then the next day day two five percent chance day three five percent chance day four when you water these flowers and it doesn't have to be consecutive days but when these flowers have been watered four times on different days the chance to produce goes up to 10 percent then the next day 15 percent 20 percent etc so on day four of watering they will start to go up with the chance but it's still very kind of low chance to produce and also these flowers have to stay in the same place as it says here the counter will be reset if the flowers are dug up or if they produce so if you have a pair here and they produce then the counter resets and if you move the flowers the counter also resets so keep the flowers in these set positions build these boxes and keep the production flowers in the same place that's gonna help you with with the watering counter staying intact okay but if you have visitors come over and water your flowers one visitor watering your flowers is gonna give them a plus 20 percent boost to production two visitors plus 30 percent three visitors 45 percent four visitors 60 percent five visitors plus 75 percent 
boost to production. That is a massive freaking boost. If you have five people come over and water all your flowers, they're basically rocketing the chance to produce to the freaking moon. But even one person, and that is the more realistic option, of course. So one person comes over and waters your flowers, it's going to boost the chance by 20%. Like compared to that of you starting with a 5% chance, exactly. I've done this myself and it, it you can really notice the difference. You have one person come over and water and it's just like, wow, there's so many flowers producing now. So if you can get a friend to come over and water your flowers, that's going to give you a very good boost to the chance of producing and same thing, go over to their island and water their flowers. You're both going to be helping each other out. But yeah, if you're if you're looking for a way to boost the chances of this flower's production, then visitor watering is how you can really boost it pretty, pretty massively and pretty easily if you can get someone to come over. So that is the second bonus tip. But that is basically it, how to get some purple hyacinths in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Thanks for watching guys, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. If you have your own methods on how to get these easily, you can share that information as well. If you liked the video, you thought it was helpful, be sure to press the like button, comment down below, that helps me out, I appreciate it. And see you again next time have fun with the game it's a great freaking title and good luck in getting these purple hyacinths with this clone pair method you should absolutely be able to get them because it is just a matter of time you have really good chances 25 percent chance out of these guys to make a super flower so these hyacinths are a little bit easier than some of the other flowers thank freaking god but that was it thanks for watching guys have a good day bye bye take care Ooh, eh?